Okay, factoring by grouping. To factor a trinomial in the form ax squared plus bx plus c by grouping, we find two numbers with a product of ac and a sum of b. We use these numbers to divide the x term into the sum of two terms and factor each portion of the expression separately, then factor out the greatest common factor of the entire expression. Now, when we're using factoring by grouping, which is also called the AC method, that's when the leading coefficient is not a 1. So when we're factoring by grouping, first we need a list of factors of A and C. And then we got to find P and Q as a pair of factors of AC with the sum of the middle term B. And then we're going to rewrite the original expression in four terms, which is AX squared plus PX plus QX plus C. And then we're going to pull out the greatest common factor of the first grouping and pull out the second greatest common factor of the second grouping. And then we're going to factor out the greatest common factor of the expression. So in example number three, we want to factor 5x squared plus 7x minus 6 by grouping. Now the first question that we want to ask ourselves is, can we factor out a common uh, greatest common factor with all three of these terms? When we look at that, we don't see anything that we need to factor out. We also notice that the 5 is not a 1, so the leading coefficient is not a 1. So that tells us that we're going to have to use the AC method. Well, we're using the AC method, okay, we're going to take A and multiply it by C. Well, the value of A is 5. And the value of C is negative 6. When we multiply them together, we get negative 30. So we're going to create our x, and then we can see that ac is going to be 30. And then we have the value of b, which is 7. So now we know that b is 7. And so what we want to do is, again, kind of similar in the last example, we want to figure out, okay, what are two factors of 30? So we can break it down into its prime form. Now, again, with 30, it's a smaller number, but if you end up having a larger number, then you want to use prime factorization to see any kind of combinations. So in this case here, we can factor this out to be 3 and then 10. Now when we look at the difference between 3 and 10, we see that it's going to give us 7. So it's given us that middle term, but we need to figure out what are the signs of those numbers to give us a product of negative 30 and the sum of 7. Well, that means that the 3 would have to be negative and the 10 would have to be positive because negative 3 times 10 gives us negative 30, and negative 3 plus 10 gives us 7. So we determined that p is negative 3 and that q is 10. And then now we're going to rewrite this as four terms. So we have our first term, which is 5x squared minus 3x plus 10x minus 6. And now we're going to factor by grouping. So we're going to group the first two terms which is 5x squared minus 3x, plus we're grouping the last two terms, which is 10x minus 6. Now, if we look at the first grouping, we need to ask ourselves, what can we factor out of those first two terms? Well, what they both have in common is an x, and what's remaining is 5x minus 3. Okay? Now, what's remaining is 5x minus 3 and then once you know what that is you're going to immediately write it over here on this side and then look back up here and say okay well what can I factor out so I'm left with 5x minus 3 well I can factor out a 2 because 2 times 5x is 10x 2 times minus 3 is negative 6 and so now what we can do is we can factor out 5x minus 3 from these two terms so we have 5x minus 3 and then what's left over is x plus 2. And we can check our work by multiplying. And again, we can either use FOIL, the distributive property, or the box method to confirm that when we multiply this together, we're going to get that result.